Am I audible to everyone? Yes. Good morning. Hello. 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 Okay. Good morning. Okay, great. Uh, actually, the Wi-Fi in the school is not working today, so we're like solely on the mobile data today. So uh, if my voice breaks, just let me know. Like I'll change my location. I'll try to find it's better from that issue. So let's begin today's session. Everybody just put up on your mats. And just gently close the eye. And start observing the breath. Make sure that your back and neck are straight. Face is completely relaxed. And both the hips have equal weight. Not leaning forward, not going back. Just aligned in your posture. And then you can gently come back to the breath. And close. When you feel ready, you can begin to elongate the breath. And go deeper, relax the mind. And prepare the mind for chanting only three times, followed by three chanties. Exhale completely. And then inhale for all. Feel the vibrations. And join both the parts together in front of the chest. Up with the palms together. And keep them on the eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at the palms, open up your eyes, come back with a smile. And namaste to everyone. Let us begin today's session. 
<clears throat> so today we are starting with the schools of Yo. And the first school that we are going to discuss is Karm Yo. Or the path of action. So there are multiple meditations, there are multiple ways of achieving the same goal which are out there. And you will find a lot of variety even when you go into just the asana part of you, you will see there is vinyas, ashtang vinyas, hat yoga, all of these like with time, with the area, the practice got modified, it got changed. But the end goal still remains the same, right? When you go to uh, asana practice, you want to attain flexibility. You want to, you know, work on your strength. Uh, yeah. And you want to work on the concentration of the mind when you are doing asana. You want to feel your body open as you perform a particular asana. So each and every style, yin, yoga, all of these styles of asanas which are going on, all of them have a very different approach, how you begin, how your breath should be, how much holding you are doing, is the dynamic movement, is the slow movement, you know? All of these things are there, but the final goal remains the same, yes? So it depends on your personality, it depends on how you feel comfortable that you choose a form of yoga and then you practice it right so the same thing is with the entire school entire thought of you there were multiple ways in which you could attain the final goal and on a very i would say upper level or on a very like in a broad category the these thoughts were divided into four schools. So we'll have one class on each school of yoga. So today we are discussing Karma Yoga, there is Bhakti Yoga, then we have Gyan Yoga, and then we have Raj Yoga. So these are four schools, main schools that you will come across when you are, especially going into the theoretical study of yoga. Okay. So each and every one of them uh, they have their own quality, they have their own point of origination and it depends on your personality out of the four, which one suits you. You can go ahead and adopt that school and then you can move ahead in the practices given as per that school so that eventually you can reach the final goal. And as it happens, all of these are not actually different from one another. As you proceed on, when you choose one school and you proceed on that path, you will see that all schools start to merge, okay? So the practices are different, but all of them require, you know, all these aspects. So eventually all of them start merging, but for the beginning, whichever suits your personality more, these were divided in such a manner that, you know, there are certain people who believe in this or certain people who have this mindset. So they will be able to go ahead and practice that school more easily because your belief system counts a lot when you come into any practice actually, and especially into you, your belief system, what you believe in uh, counts a lot when you are moving on your journey in yoga, okay? So karma yoga or the path of action. Karma literally means the word karma, K-A-R-M-A. -A. It literally uh, means action or work. Okay? And it is a method of, you know, union with your higher self, connecting with your higher self by harmonizing your actions. So the uh, mind, whatever thought you have, that is how your action is. Whatever you talk of, you are actually doing that. 
you know one way of understanding karma yoga is that all the three things your speech body and mind they are aligned together there is a union between all of them there is harmony uniformity between all these three and hence the uh, karma yogi is able to connect with the higher self with the uh, you know um, with that purity the pure consciousness as we call it he is able to connect with that part he is able to so he is basically building up a road to uh attain that connection with himself with herself okay so basically uh like you know network gets connected sometimes like especially over here in the campus we have to walk around here and there to find the right you know uh, there is a there is a particular spot where the wifi is good where the connection is good so we then we just stay over there and you know take the class so in that way so what is happening is you are just aligning yourself you're putting yourself in the right spot so that you are instantly able to feel that connection with your own self so karma yoga is basically that right point and you are how you are reaching that right point also okay so you are reaching so if i walk till that place so i am like um that is an action so i'm walking till that place where the you know network is good so that i can directly connect with uh, you guys you know i can properly connect with you guys there is no interruption okay so that is what the karma yogi does he chooses to walk okay so he is he understands the power of the day to day actions and he believes that working on them is the way to reach the final goal so most of us when we think of yoga we think that we have to separately take out time and that is not possible for us because even right now like uh, when you guys join the classes it's good and you are separately taking out time but if you're not able to implement it in your life then these classes will do you good no doubt about that but they won't be able to do you um uh good to the extent that they can do you know so the actual potential can only be realized when you are able to incorporate these things in the day to day life okay and um most people when they hear of yoga they think that they will have to leave their lives behind and after a particular point yes it is true however till a very advanced stage you can still exist in society and practice you because it is the way in which you exist the way in which your mind exists it's nothing else it's nothing extraordinary it's nothing you separately have to take out time for okay so you are working on your own day to day routine to make it more efficient okay so efficiency of a karma yogi is very high you know we think that if we can do 10 things at a time our efficiency level will increase but that is actually not true if you are doing whatever you are doing with full concentration that is when you will be able to finish that task very easily and very quickly but we feel the opposite why because one thing we have been trained to feel or think the mind is trained that way second thing is that because we believe in this we end up procrastinating you know procrastination that word you must have heard of and more than heard of you must have experienced this thing that when you are doing something uh, sometimes you do not feel like you know doing that thing so you end up wasting more time doing every other thing and then when you have to do that task then it will only take you 10 minutes but the mental load is so much that you end up wasting half an hour just trying to de stress yourself or just you know lazing around so it's because of procrastination that you know uh, that same thing we feel that no no
happen uh, we, if we do one thing at a time. Really functioning with so much progress. We do train the mind in such a manner where we are doing one task at a time. And not only that, we are doing it with full concentration. We'll end up saving a lot of time instead of wasting that time. Because, you know, the mind is trained in that way now. We are placing the mind like we're telling the mind, no, you're not going to do this. You're going to work on whatever you have. You know, whatever I'm doing right now, that is it. So the Karam Yogi has this very strong, you know, uh, realization from within that whatever I am doing, that is my worship. That is it. And he treats his work as worship. Whatever you do in your life, if you are a student, if you are in your profession, when you enter your profession, if the feeling of, you know, devotion, that dedication is not coming from within you, then you have to, then you need to understand that right now you are not practicing karma because for a karma yogi there is no separate God. His action is his worship. His action is the God. And by performing the action correctly, he is dedicating that thing to something beyond himself. Okay? So, when you show up on the mat, suppose when you are practicing you, when you show up on the mat, there is so much dedication towards that thing. Like, you know, when we enter the temple, we feel that dedication. That sort of dedication comes in when the karma yogi is able to, you know, perform his action properly. He understands that, you know, this task is so important he understands the importance of each and every task he does and with detachment so when we say that something is important there is immediately this um, sense of attachment that comes in zaruri kaam hoga you know in hindi we say it's like zaruri kaam hai so when we say this it's an, it's an important task then a level of attachment comes in. But for the Karmi Yogi, there is no attachment. Okay, so he is like in uh, when we were discussing the definitions of yoga, we talked of yoga, karma, su, kaushala, right? Skillfulness in action. And I explained what skillfulness is. So there is 100% dedication. There is perfection in your action. So you are properly dedicated to the action which leads to perfection in action and there is a sense of detachment from the results okay these are the qualities of you know whenever whatever you are doing like after the class or right now when you're taking the class most of us we you know the mind has the tendency to wander away in between so that is what actually the karan yogi is working on keeping the mind with the work however there is no attachment okay so in bhagavad gita also karma yoga has been mentioned it is like um, yeah 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 i'm coming to bhagavad gita only yes so in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you will find the definition Yog Karma Sukoshalam, where he is talking of Karma Yoga only. And this meaning the perfection in action is you, you know. So he is talking about that. And uh, in depth, it has been discussed in the third chapter. Okay, so. When you see the title of the third chapter yesterday, I asked you to take out all the names of the chapters. So the third chapter is actually Karma Yoga, the Yoga of Action. You know? And over there, he has talked in detail about, uh, uh, he's explaining to Arjun what Karma Yoga is. And he explains what are the various ways of you know achieving yoga. And then, he says that, you know, karma yoga is one of the ways. And 
uh, then he explains the qualities he uh, uh, tells how you know um, one can attain freedom through this path okay uh, and he emphasizes on the importance of action so he says in bhagavad gita that a human being cannot exist without karma so if i am existing if you guys are existing right now you are over here that means at every point of time like you know prana like in pranayam class we talked of prana and i told you that breath you can hold but if the prana leaves the body then you know the body cannot survive so same thing if we are alive then at every point of time karma is going on some or the other action is going on either on the physical level or or on the mental level okay and he says that one cannot escape this so human being cannot escape this thing action will always be there however he says that uh, you can at least detach yourself from the uh, result that's the fruit of the action so being uh, completely getting away from action is not possible okay but the human being has the control over the attachment that he or she generates towards that action they so said become detached from the results of your action so the karma yogi performs the action as a duty but is totally detached from the results so a very common question before you guys ask me any questions let me tell you a very common question that comes up if i am detached how will i work there is a very big conflict that arises in the mind that try like you know if we are not attached to the results if we are not goal oriented how will we work so over here <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah see the connection we got disconnected over here <laughs> yeah yeah so uh anusha ji wrote very well like the purpose of the action so um this question comes up so a few days back i was having this discussion and uh you know um we were talking how passion is the quality of rajas but compassion is the quality of sattva you know so it's okay to start with passion because most of the people around you if you like observe most of the people around you they do not they do not realize that their work has a purpose they do not realize that you know uh, they do not even feel passionate towards their work they're just doing it because they're doing it out of a sense of world there is not even the sense of duty that comes in even though they're doing it out of duty only they have to fulfill certain responsibilities but they're not um, you know fueled by that work it doesn't add to them it takes away from them. like most people you will come across they're working in that so a state above that 
is being passionate about your work. Okay. So it's good to have passion towards whatever you are doing because when you're passionate about something, it actually energizes you. That is why there is so much passion that is generated towards it. You know, if something is making you feel good, you would definitely, you know, um, become passionate towards that thing. You would like doing that, giving most of your time to do that. So passion, like as far as I have understood so far, it is better to be passionate about your work than to be in a state where you are just existing. Okay. But but that passion can become high. Okay, so Nalvai said it has a lot of energy and they can choose to channel it towards Satvik. So same is the thing when it comes to action. So a person who is very passionate about whatever as there is a check and that is where the concept of Nishkam part, the detachment part that I am talking about, not attached to the results. N I S H K A N. So be passionate about your work as long as you are able to balance that out. At least for a beginner, it is very important that you balance that. Okay. Yogic journey is even like, uh, first you have to become a bhogi. First you have to, you know, reach that stage where you are uh, enjoying everything you have properly. You're able to understand the right way to enjoy it. When you will enjoy it in the right way and you will see that, you know, this enjoyment is also not permanent, that is when you will start coming out of it. So, your passion will start turning into compassion because now you are surrendering your action to something higher than. You. Okay, so that is why I said you will see a lot of people who treat their work as worship. It is their place of worship. So this word when it, this word worship comes in. So worship, we generally worship something out, outside of us. Whenever Okay. Am I audible? Yes. Now you are. Now I am. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was saying that uh, once the ego goes down, that is when you reach that stage, when you are able to derive compassion out of that passion. Okay. So that is actually the way to go for you. That at least first jump is Rajas is the middle where first from inactiveness you will come in a state where there is activity and then you will channel that activity towards the sattvic cause. Okay. So if you feel Right now, you are in the tamas stage. Aim to go towards rajas step by step and then step by step go towards sat. Okay. Otherwise, you will end up falling back into your old patterns very easily. So it's a very slow step by step process that you have to, you know, adopt when you are uh, doing this. So karma yogi will have... Uh, 
will not like differentiate between like different tasks that he is given suppose you are like a, at a very high authority uh, wherever you are working or in your uh, uh, college or school wherever you are right now you are doing what you are like at a, a position where you have authority maybe you are you know the cr of your class okay so uh, that authority will give you you know some sense of who you are uh, and what is expected out of you and how you have to function so when that person is in authority is given a task which is not you know expected out of uh, the person in that position then they feel that i shouldn't do this task why because uh, cr thodi karta hai or you know uh, uh, the manager will not go and do this you know paperwork or the manager will not go and do you know uh, the task of getting Am I audible to you guys? <sighs> yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I was saying that even if a karmio be sent to do a task as you know simple as cleaning the room, he will not take it like he or she will not be like you know why am I being asked to do this thing. they will accept that work they will treat it with the same level of dedication put in the same amount of hard work and get their task done properly and that is what all of your life is about whatever life brings to you if you are able to do that thing properly it doesn't matter if anybody around you is you know uh, you will see a lot of people who do not work that much they move uh, ahead in life maybe they get better grades uh, for students for professionals they get more pay so it doesn't matter if even if you are you know surrounded by such people it is you and your action which matters your intention your dedication you will always know how much you are putting in how much uh, dedication you are putting into something you are doing and the entire story is just about that it is your quality to complete your task in a particular manner it is not their quality and it should never be determined by the quality of the people around you okay if somebody is putting in 50% efforts getting 100% results maybe they you know uh, it happens sometimes you know you never really know why that happened but that shouldn't make you um feel that you should give in 50% and then you will also attain 100 no your intention counts your understanding of how you are doing that work counts and you know because your separate records are kept nobody is going to see that because they influenced that person that person acted in that way you know when somebody gets angry and takes really bad actions like beating someone you know abusing someone then nobody sees that you know how they grew up uh, or what circumstances circumstances they were put through yes it is 
even if you are considerate enough to think about those things yes it influences the mind there is no doubt about it but a person always has a choice you know so when say a, an extreme action is done so nobody will think ki you know their upbringing was in this manner or because of that situation that person acted in that no they just going to see that okay you did not act in the right manner yeah so your action counts for you nobody else is going to you know people are going to comment people are going to appreciate you criticize you all of these things will go on but only you know how you are doing your action so as long as you are aware you are conscious you are putting in 100% effort and you are balanced your state of mind is balanced it is good enough and always go for uh, you know whenever you do a particular action in your life suppose you wake up in the morning and uh, you know you brush your teeth very simple example you wake up in the morning you brush your teeth so that action elevates us right you know you are able to maintain the hygiene of your your dental hygiene uh, you will not uh, suffer from yellowing of teeth or you will not you know have cavities you will not have all of those things right so that action that you do every day in the morning when you wake up that action elevates your life in some way right so whenever you are doing some action in your life just is it making your life better or is it making your life your life better okay okay i'm back again yeah so i took the example of eating junk food and how it makes you feel good right all of us love you know junk food so fast food so suppose somebody comes up to you and says i feel very good my life is elevated when i eat junk food so a person who is very aware of these things if they check their body their body is not happy about it the mind is happy the mind is happy to attain you know acquire certain things suppose uh you are in a secluded area or you go for some meditation retreat they do not add onion to your food so when you go back home you eat that or they do not give you ice cream suppose and you go back home you want to eat that it happens with me a lot so over here we do not have a lot of things that you will find in delhi and delhi is known for its food you know the taste of the food if you eat in delhi it's super like super duper i would say it's very tasty so when you come over here most of the food you find in delhi it's not available so when i go back home even i have this tendency you know if i go back home i'm just like for 3 4 days when i am home i'm just like you know uh, get everything <laughs> i want to eat this 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 so at that point of time even i'm working on my food habits now more and more so in the pre- past few months when i went back one or two times i had this tendency of you know going and eating everything i couldn't find over here because you know now that has become very uh, precious to <laughs> me so but uh, that food does not enhance the quality of my life my body uh, does not feel good after feel very lethargic whenever i go back and you know eat heavy food 
fried food because over here we eat simple sathik food only yeah, roti sabzi so this natural tendency of the mind it runs away but i see the ill effects of that and so i know that that action does not elevate me it pulls me down so still working on that thing some awareness so step by step even i am going step by step by reducing one thing or the other working with one one thing one day at a time and uh, you know that is with one thing and you try to first you will only be in a stage where you will at least start becoming aware of the elements then slowly the patterns that you have created they were very low because when when i went into very extreme and i avoided all of that food and then when i came back to the other extreme i you know indulged properly in all junk food so i decided oh, yeah however there should be a balanced state of mind so whenever you consume that kind of food i saw that the state of balance of my mind was also born i you know because there is so much heat that is produced in the body or so much lethargy so that balance state is gone my attention went down so these things happen so whatever you do in life just check how you are feeling how you are uh, how your mind is how your body these feeling when you uh, the better it becomes changing your action uh, in sync with how you want to exist instead of you know how everything around you is making you exist okay and one more thing so there is this question of right action subjects and ethics are written on right and wrong so all of these principles that are discussed so as per yogic philosophy if you see then again the right and wrong action has been distinguished and they say that to understand in order to understand what is right and wrong your first uh, checkpoint is going to be you know your own uh, logic your own understanding the scriptures around you whatever they say you know if you read certain scriptures you will get to know they okay, should do this thing this is right this is wrong and your own common sense you know if i am cutting a tree it's going to harm that tree so if i don't require it that is if i don't require it then i should not so right now we are just hurting the environment just for the sake of luxury so that thing will start going away if your mind comes in a state where you know you are observing things and there is common logic that you develop so first way for you to distinguish between a right and wrong action is your own logic okay so uh, read more books uh, especially spiritual books will be able to help something
Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so I was saying the second way, like when you are unfamiliar with something, you do not know that thing, that is when the guru will be able to guide you. This is right and wrong in this particular situation, you know? This is what you are experiencing. Is it right? Is it wrong? How you need to act according to that situation? What is the right way to go about it? That is when you need some external help and a proper guru, somebody you believe in, you have faith in, and who has himself walked the path, will be able to guide you right and wrong, give that proper distinction. And then the third way, it is a very advanced stage when this third way, you can access this third way. And it is very commonly famously known as intuition. Okay. So when, when you go deep into meditation, when you go, when you, your practice is regular, you start connecting with a voice which is inside of you, which has al always existed. It has always told you this is not okay for you or this is okay for you. Regardless of what society says or what the standards have been set, you know, whatever the standards have been set so far, it is regardless of that thing that this voice comes up and says that do this thing, don't do this. So when you go into deep meditation, when that, you know, that distinction starts coming in where you can connect with that inner voice, with your intuition, that is when your third way will open up for you and the third way of judging what is right and what is wrong is your own inner voice which will be able to tell you guide you properly okay so when we talk of karma all of these things have to be kept in mind you can read the um, some parts of the second chapter uh, touch upon karma and certain verses and uh, then most of it has been discussed in the third chapter. Okay, so you can read Bhagavad Gita's third chapter. Even Patanjali ji has given a lot of relevance to karma. And in the fourth chapter, he has talked of the uh, various types of actions and, you know, uh, the action of a yogi, the action that we generally perform. Com a common person performs during the day. So in the fourth chapter in Kevalya Pad, he has talked of uh, these actions. So even he emphasized on the uh, relevance of whatever you are doing. So you can go ahead and read that also. So however you like want to attain this, how we want to go about it from Patanjali's point of view or from Bhagavad Gita's point of view, you can go ahead and uh, read up more about it. So any doubts? Am I audible? Yes, you're yeah. audible. No, yes. no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Okay. Okay. Great. So then let's end today's session. So once you read, that is when you can ask. Okay. So read up more about it. Great. So let's end today's session. Just sit on your mat and close the eyes. And just stop with the breath. We'll chant one time, followed by three shantis. Inhale deeply for Om. Shanti Just feel the vibrations of 
join both the palms together in front of your chest, bow down. And let's take out this time to feel grateful for everything we have. Feel the gratitude. Wrap both the palms together. Keep them on the eyes. And very slowly while blinking and looking at the palms, open up the eyes. Come back with a big smile. Namaste to everyone. I will see you all for your pranayam class in the evening. So, bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Can Thank you. Yes, Anusha ji, I just saw your question. Uh, you can read that book, Karmyu by Swami Vivekananda. It's a very good book. I actually have the volumes, the seven volumes of Swami Vivekananda. In that, uh, Karm Yoga is specified. It's the same, right? It's just separated in a different book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will find his commentary on Patanjali Yoga Sutra also. So he talks about... Yeah, I read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means that he wrote you know, wrote about these concepts, but mostly this is what you will find. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh,